Hi, I'm Jim Grouch of Metange Proprietary Limited. And in this short video, I want to demonstrate the use of a grid or a spreadsheet to columns and arrays display of data in Learn Medsim. So the grid or a spreadsheet is the ideal way to display and work with arrays of data. A single page or worksheet can display a 2D array of data or a matrix and a 3D data set can be displayed using multiple pages or worksheets. Now, Microsoft Excel has become the spreadsheet application um, most of us use. But any or, or most programming languages um, have the capability for creating grid controls. And these can be added to, to any, any program or, or application you may wish to, to build. <clears throat> but obviously there's an enormous amount of uh, time and skill required to, to build, um, to, to set up all the functionality um, such as we have in um, Microsoft Excel. But if we, we look at the main features, um, there is the grid itself or the, the worksheet. And the features of it are that um, data display and entry points are arranged with um, common column widths and column row heights and you can um, in, enter data and manipulate it um, in a uh, convenient manner for this array type or grid type of data display. <clears throat> There are also um, an enormous amount of um, functionality um, tools provided in an application like Excel. But any of these can be created um, in your own spreadsheet application, if you wish, using Learn the Metsim or Learn APL for Metsim users. But obviously there's simply no point trying to replicate what Microsoft has provided for us all bought from other um, software development companies and sold, modified and sold to us um, for, for the price that they can deliver it. Okay, so let's have a look at, um, <clears throat> start with matrices or, or, or objects, data objects um, in Medsim and in this case I'll just use the ammonia vapor liquid equilibrium data in this model as a display of an array of data. Now I'm going to go across and um, now I'm going to start Learn Metsim, which is Learn APL for Metsim users. I will clear the existing workspace or just tidy up my desk with Control K and say yes I do want to clear it and then I will load my X Metsim or Metsim extensions workspace and then list the functions that are available. I'll, I'll also just quickly change the displayed um, tutorial from the general APL language tutorial which we're used to seeing and flip across to APL Z objects because the Z grid object is one of the many very very powerful um, pre-configured um, programming aids that's included in, in Z objects. So somewhere down here in amongst this we're going to find uh, the Z grid. But as you can see there are many many Z objects covering almost all aspects of programming that we might want including web-based uh, um, uh, programming tools, etc. Well, I can't see it immediately, so you can look at that later. Oh, one more thing while we're looking at this uh, tutorial, I might want to change my view to read tutorial mode. So I, I, I just have the tutorial to read, and then I can change back, uh, unselect read tutorial mode. I might want to just um, hide the uh, APL keyboard, collapse it so it's gone. So there are various ways of controlling 
um, the view or the arrangement of space in Learn Metsim or Learn APL for Metsim. I'm just going to unstretch that keyboard because I prefer it to look undistorted. Okay, a quick diversion, but we're back on track, I think. So I've listed the functions in the workspace, and I'm going to use the gas turbine um, data as an example. So for those who haven't seen it, um, there is a function in here that creates a graphic user interface that can be created within Metsim itself by copying the code into the user object in Metsim. And this graphic user interface enables you to select from a database um, by machine model um, parameters for a gas turbine set and use it in the model and then parameterize um, to achieve the um, catalog power output under standard conditions etc. The database that that uh, graphic user interface is using is created using another function which is called some gas turbine data. So there's the function, some gas turbine data. And if I double click into that, you'll see the function which is building the database. And it's very, very simple. Um, and because of this very simple repetitive manner in which it's coded, if you want to add additional turbine data set to the function, you simply copy paste and edit the last values, the last row. So I must remember to escape rather than say that because I don't want to repeat that last line. We can see that at the very end of the function, <coughs> it's built, it, which builds an array, the, the array is copied to a, a variable which is named using a Metsim consistent uh, UM for user matrix um, um, naming convention so that this can also be generated and used in Metsim. And the last line is um, returning the value 1 to the result, which is sort of just my way of saying that I get a, a, a feedback from, from the system when it runs to say, OK, that worked. So number 1 is, to me, Boolean true. In other words, all good. But I'm going to comment out that last line so that the last line now will be to generate the user matrix. And I'm going to delete that last line of the array building and then control E to save the function and then I'm going to place the cursor at the end of the line with that function name and press enter and we see that the array, the matrix is generated in and it's displayed in the session. And we see that the, the values are, are wrapped because there's too much data to see um, with my screen resolution, so I'm going to um, collapse the APL keyboard pane um, no, and also um, collapse the tutorial pane and drag my uh, window to use more of my desk space. And, and there we have the, the data array as, as a matrix. <clears throat> as it will be used in, as it could be used in medicine. But that's, that's okay, that's, um, but, it, but it's certainly not, um, it's certainly not as nice as it would be in a spreadsheet or a spreadsheet type um, of grid. So I'm going to scroll, scroll back up and look for another function which I would have named with the word show as in instead of sum. So sum is generating the data but now I want to show the data so here we have another function which is show gas turbine data and again placing the um, cursor at the end of the function name that I want to execute and pressing enter and what we see this time is the same data but it is it has been generated um, in a grid control which really is uh, a spreadsheet type of display. And this um, grid control um, has been generated by um, the code 
which is um, provided in uh, Metsim extensions for this example. And you can see there's not much code required to do this. And again, this is because of the power of Z objects. And um, here we have everything that we need to see. So we can see it's first getting the data from that um, array, and then it's just displaying the data in a grid control. And it's doing a few clever things, like it's setting the column widths, etc., based on the data in the grid. And it's also specifying the minimum form size and and a few nice things to so that we don't get into trouble. So what we have is an Excel type looking grid um, which is completely programmable um, and shares many many of the common functionality um, features that you would expect in, in a spreadsheet like grid. And we can see that it, this grid only has one page but obviously it's very simple to to, to modify the program so there are multiple pages. Um, and it's created in its own form. There's a, an edit control up the top, which I'm not using at the moment. It generates with its own um, buttons for OK and Cancel, which do nothing because I haven't added any code into the function to tell it what to do with those. And I think that's all I really want to display at this point, simply to show you that it's very easy to write your own programs and custom user interfaces for use with data uh, with Medsim using the grid. Thank you for your uh, time. I'm getting up to 12 minutes, so I think I'll stop this now.